kind of what you'd expect from a young team playing so well so many times and a couple of blips, but in the end they played pretty well down the stretch. That was one of our uh, last uh, uh, timeouts there. Uh, when I think I, we had a nine or ten point lead with, with five, six minutes to go. And I told guys, like, we just need to learn how to close those games. You know, what it takes, how to execute, how to, you know, get that extra rebound that we need. Uh, it, it came down to last couple of possessions that we needed to to get a stop. Uh, it, it's going to be a really good film for us to to watch and then learn. Um, in the second half, they did much more switching one through five, and that uh, slowed down us and the ball movement. We had 15 assists in the first half and, and uh, only nine in the second half. Um, that was the main takeaway of the game. Um, in that last play when Brooks hit the three in the far corner, did you think to foul? Did, were you thinking about fouling, or is it a judgment call on the player's part? Uh, we were thinking uh, fouling, but we did a uh, uh, short timeout. We were talking about the two seconds at the end. Or shot before that. Before that shot before that, yes. We were talking about that, like he was just way wide open. We, we were not close enough to, to foul that. But on, on the last position, no, because with uh, two seconds on the shot clock, usually players are going to catch being in a shooting motion there, and uh, we were trying to avoid uh, fouling on that one. Yeah, I mean, in the first half, it looked like, as you said, your guys were very cohesive. Bruce Brown, I thought, looked as good as he's looked maybe since he's been here. And then uh, how do you kind of keep that ball movement and cutting going when they're switching so much and sort of stifling you? What's the, what's the trick? Uh, uh, so when teams are switching, we had uh, two positions where we scored in the first half. You've got to be able to change pace. You've got to be able to slip more and to create confusion. And uh, those situations are creating actually uh, open cuts and, and layups, or somebody's going to be open for a, for a shot. So those are the reads and, and things that we needed to, uh, to work on. It happened a couple of times that I called uh, defense tonight, and four players are looking at me like we don't know what what it is, you know. So, uh, so, uh, but overall, I think we did we did a lot of good stuff. Uh, I'm really proud of our uh, effort to uh, prevent them from scoring in the paint. They scored only 38 points, uh, comparing to 84 points in the previous game seven days ago. So uh, we're doing a much better job of taking pride on the ball, but also shifting and helping each other. That was uh, probably the best drop defense we've seen played from the team in about a month. How nice is it to have that conservative package to go to from the start of the game to work from out of that? Uh, it is nice. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, great uh, pride that our guys took uh, tonight uh, upon themselves, and uh, everybody uh, they just stepped up. Uh, I think we in the first half we had 27 deflections, we had uh, 13 steals, we created 21 points off of, off of those uh, steals. So that's something that we're going to continue to build. Um, Any time that looked like for us that we have a little bit of uh, uh, fatigue, then uh, then we slow down, we missed a couple of layups or wide open shots. We just got to continue building that uh, stamina on both ends of the floor. We talked pregame about uh, not having a backup point guard essentially, and now Scotty's going to take more of that role. What do you think of him and that with those bench units without quickly on the court? Uh, I thought that, that he was doing a good job there. Um, it kind of like overlapped because those moments they started actually switching much more to one through five. So that slowed us down a little bit. Um, they were creating uh, some cushion or playing off of him. Uh, I think that uh, he needs to be more assertive that when he has open shots to, to take those shots. But I thought that, that his playmaking tonight was uh, was uh, outstanding, that he was uh, finding his teammates. Uh, end of the game, he was m making huge winning plays, rebounding the ball. Um, I thought that he played really well. A couple of those situations he had around the rim, uh, um, could it be a foul or not? I, I thought that... that, that um, there should be a little bit of uh, respect level there for him to, to get him a couple more calls. But overall, I think it was a really good game. You had talked about wanting Emmanuel to get up more threes. I think he got nine up tonight. Did you like the way he was looking for a shot this evening? Yes, uh, especially in the, in the first half, uh, he was able to get some uh, out of pick and rolls uh, and uh, in transition, but also his teammates found him. I believe that two of those threes in the first half came uh, from Scotty post up and kicked the ball out uh, to him. So, um, yes, we want him to shoot uh, 
10, 10 threes a game, and he was able to get nine tonight. And that's going to continue keep, continue getting better. The pick and roll Last couple chemistry. questions, please. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Uh, the pick and roll chemistry between you, uh, between IQ and Yak, has been developing very well. Famously in, in Memphis, you worked with Stephen Adams, who incredible screener, great sealer. How much of that do you sort of see in the connection between IQ and Yak? It's uh, just the start of those guys uh, trying to figure it out together. Uh, we had uh, those two guys when we were rehabbing in Houston. We had a great, great workout. They were able to go together for like 45 minutes, and we dissected uh, pick and roll game to, to the point with those guys, what they need to look for, how we need to set screens, what angles, what they're doing against overs, unders, how to create threes, but also how Yak needs to be able to when quickly is turning the court on how Yak needs to uh, to get uh, get offensive rebounds. When you look at the switching in the second half, do you hope that sometimes maybe IQ and Scotty look to initiate two man actions because of the inherent advantage there? Yeah, we did it a couple of times. Uh, um, it was just uh, they were quite physical. It prevented some easy rolls there. Uh, but uh, every game we're trying to put them in those situations that, that they can play off of each other and, and create Scotty on the ball and quickly setting screens, but also vice versa. Yeah, uh, it seems like you and RJ are actually sort of developing some chemistry. What have you made of his playmaking skills since he's come over? Um, I mean, he's doing a good job. Like he's a tough finisher, so a lot of times the defense kind of collapses on him. And when they do, he's find, doing a good job, like finding me for late dump offs and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think he had a couple of assists for me tonight, and even in the last few games. You were able to limit Sengun tonight um, a bit more than last week. What, what did you guys do differently as a team to sort of limit your shot attempt? Um, I mean, I think we, we had a focus as a team to like um, take the pain away. Um, so that obviously includes like most of his points as well. But um, also on drives, like we were just more active as, as a team. And but we had a different energy in, in today's game um, compared to the last one. As the anchor at the bottom of the defense, how much does the nail help with you? being more active in the gaps at the top? How much does that help and affect what you're able to do at the bottom, obviously finishing with six blocks left? Um, I mean, obviously it helps a lot um, because it, it just discourages drives um, to begin with. So um, if we can stop the drive um, at the nail um, and have them kick it out and take contested threes, then that's a lot better for us than having them drive downhill where we get into like deeper rotations and it's, it's tougher to keep up with um, putting everybody else in, in a little bit of a um, worse spot. Um, so yeah, if, if we're successful on the nail with, with our shifts, that, that helps a lot. Sorry, obviously uh, by moments you led by as much as 20, but it ended up being a pretty close game. This is a, an increasingly young team with all the moves that have been made. How can, as a group, can you learn from a, a win like this? Um, I mean, just, I guess, be more solid um, at the end of the game. Um, there was there was a couple of mistakes in there. Also, like when when we had the lead and, and we're dribbling the ball up the court, I think we got to keep our aggressiveness a little bit. It's it's one thing not to play wild and like try and manage your lead. Um, you want to play smart, but um, we almost like made it a little. We made it a little bit too easy on them getting stops at the, uh, there at the end of the game. And I think part of it is also us missing a couple of looks that uh, usually go in. So. Um, I'm not too worried about it, but um, especially because we, we found a way to win. What are the conversations like in the locker room afterwards? Like, what do you say? What do other veteran presence or, or Darko say after a win like that? Um, I mean, it's a good win for us, um, and it's at the same time it's a learning experience. Like being in a in a game like that, um, when it comes down to the wire, um, like. Cleaning up those uh, mistakes on defense, cleaning up um, like even rebounds at the end of the game that kind of like kept them in the game a little bit, uh, getting a little bit better organized, um, stuff like that. Um, yeah. You played against Kelly for a long time. What do you think he's going to bring to the team? Um, he's a very crafty player. Um, he's he's good with the, with the ball in his hands. Like he, he finds his teammates. Like he's he's good facilitator. Uh, facilitator. Um, can also stretch the floor out there, so um, pretty versatile out there on, on offense. Um, and then, yeah, uh, like you said, he's a veteran player. He's, he's very smart the way he, he reads the game, the way he attacks the game. So um, I'm sure he can help us out um, there as well, especially with some of the younger players. I was asking uh, Darko about your screening ability, just the chemistry between you and IQ, RJ as well. 
How does your approach change when you're screening for IQ, RJ, even Scotty? Like, is there a different way you approach the screens when it comes to those guys? I mean, yeah. Like, you, first of all, you're trying to develop uh, chemistry with um, everybody out there on the court, and especially those guys where we, we are in, in a lot of pick and rolls together. Um, and then, yeah, depending on um, what player is comfortable with what, like how much the defense is going over or under on them, like I got to change my screens the way, I, how long I hold them. Like um, there's a, a lot of different um, aspects to it. Um, yeah, just try and, try and read it as, uh, to the best of my ability. Yeah, is it, is it kind of a relief now to have the trade, line, trade deadline passed and you don't know these are pretty much who you're going to be working with for the rest of the year? Start working, working towards that. I mean, it's it's good in the sense that, like, like you said, now we know what we got, and we can we can try and build on this. Um, we know this team's going to stay together exactly this way, at least until the end of the season. Um, and we kind of, like, obviously, like there's it's just like a, a new wave of young players, and we're we're trying to build something. So um, we can look at the rest of the season for us to like get a head start there, like make a make a push here. Like we're not in a in a great spot with, uh, when it comes to the standings, but um, yeah, why not like try and grow something here? Like make make a push for for a play and like get those experiences, um, and at the same time, like really try and build um, uh, yeah a, a new team here, like new chemistry, new new everything. Thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel. Check out our latest video and subscribe for more.